told T-U-L-L, when I told Cora how Darl jumped out of the wagon and left Cash sitting there trying to save it and the wagon turning over and, and Jewel that was almost to the bank fighting that horse back where it had more sense than to go, she says, and you're one of the folks that says Darl was a queer one, the one that ain't bright and him the only one of them that had sense enough to get off that wagon. I noticed Anse was too smart to been on it at all. He couldn't have done no good if he'd been there, I said. There was going about it right, and they would have made it if it hadn't been for that log. Log fiddlesticks, Cora said. It was the hand of God. And how can you say it was foolish, I said. Nobody can't guard against the hand of God. It would be sacrilege to try to. Try to. Then why dare it, Cora says. Tell me that. Hans, I didn't, I said. That's just what you faulted him for. His place was there, Cora said. If he had been a man, he would have been there instead of making his sons do what he durst. What he doesn't. I don't know what you want then, I said. One breath you say they was daring the hand of God to try it, and the next breath you jump on Anse because he wasn't with them. And she began to sing again, working at the wash tub with that singing look in her face like she had done give up folks and all their foolishness and had done went on ahead of them, marching up the sky, singing. The wagon hung for a while, or the wagon hung for a long time while the current built up under it, shoving it off the ford. And Cash leaning more and more, trying to keep the coffin braced so it wouldn't slip down and finish tilting the wagon over. Soon as the wagon got tilted good to where the current could finish it, the log went on. It headed around the wagon and went on good as swimming man could have done. It was like it had been sent there to do a job and done it and went on. When the mules finally kicked loose, it looked for a minute like maybe Cash would get the wagon back. It looked like him and the wagon wasn't moving at all and just Joel fighting that horse back to the wagon. Then my boy passed me running and hollering at Darl and the gal trying to catch him. And then I see the mules come rolling slow up out of the water, their legs spraddled stiff like they had balked upside down and roll on all into uh, and roll on into the water again. Then the wagon tilted over and then it and Jewel and the horse was all mixed up together. Cash went out in sight, still holding the coffin brace and then I couldn't tell anything for the horse lunging and splashing. I thought that Cash had give up then and was swimming for it, and I was yelling at Joel to come on back, and then all of a sudden him and the horse went under too, and I thought they was all going. I knew that the horse had got dragged off the ford too, and with that wild drowning horse and that wagon and that loose box, it was going to be pretty bad, and there I was standing knee deep in the water yelling at Anse behind me. See what you done now, see what you done now. The horse come up again. It was headed for the bank now, throwing its head up, and then I saw one of them holding to the saddle on the downstream side so I started running along the bank trying to catch sight of Cash because he couldn't swim yelling at Jewel where Cash was like a darn fool bad as that boy that was on down the bank still hollering at Darl so I went down in the water so I could still keep some kind of grip in the mud when I saw Jewel he was he was middle deep so I knew he was on the ford anyway leaning hard upstream and then I see the rope and then I see the water building up where he was holding the wagon snubbed just below the ford snubbed just below the ford so it was cash holding to the horse when it comes splashing and scrambling up the bank so it was cash holding to the horse when it comes splashing and scrambling up the bank moaning and groaning like a natural man when i come to it it was just kicking cash loose from his hole on the saddle his face turned up a second when he was sliding back into the water it was gray with his eyes closed and a long swipe of mud across his face then he let go and turned over in the water. He looked just like an old bundle of clothes kind of washing up and down against the bank. He looked like he was laying there in the water on his face, rocking up and down a little, looking at something on the bottom. We could watch the rope cutting down in the water and we could feel the weight of the wagon kind of blump and lunge lazy-like, like it just as soon as not. And that rope cutting down in the water, hard as an iron bar. We could hear the water hissing on it like it was red hot, like it was a straight iron bar stuck in the bottom and us holding the end of it and the wagon lazing up and down, kind of pushing and prodding at us like it had come around and got behind us lazy like, like it just as soon as not when it made up its mind. There was a shoat, S-H-O-A-T. There was a shoat come by, blowed up like a balloon. One of them spotted shoats of lawn quicks. It bumped against the rope like it was an iron bar and bumped off and went on. And us watching that rope slanting down into the water. We watched it. So that was uh, Toll, right? Yeah, that's Toll. Just like from his, uh, what he was watching. And that's, damn, they should have just buried her where she, she was at. I mean, so they could visit her too, you know? I don't know. I guess, he, 
guess it's one of those things when you feel like you don't appreciate them when they were alive, you want to do like extra shit, you know? You want to do extra shit while they're here. I mean, while they're gone. Anyway, that was the end of tool.